Aymara is an Aymaran language spoken by the Aymara people of the Andes. It is one of only a handful of Native American languages with over three and a half million speakers. Aymara, along with Quechua and Spanish, is an official language of Bolivia. It is also spoken around the Lake Titicaca region of southern Peru and, to a much lesser extent, by some communities in northern Chile and in northwest Argentina. Some linguists have claimed that Aymara is related to its more widely spoken neighbor, Quechua. This claim, however, is disputed. Although there are indeed similarities, such as the nearly identical phonologies, the majority position among linguists today is that these similarities are better explained as aerial features, resulting from prolonged interaction between the two languages, and they are not demonstrably related. The Aymara language is an agglutinating and, to a certain extent, a polysynthetic language. It has a subject-object-verb word order. Etymology of the ethnonym The ethnonym Aymara may be ultimately derived from the name of some group occupying the southern part of what is now the Quechua-speaking area of Aporamac. Regardless, the use of the word Aymara as a label for this people was standard practice as early as 1567, as evident from García Díaz de San Miguel's report of his inspection of the province of Chucuita. In this document, he uses the term Aymara to refer to the people. The language was then called Kola. It is believed that Kola was the name of an Aymara nation at the time of conquest and later was the southernmost region of the Inca Empire Colosuyu. However, Sarone Palomino disputes this claim and asserts that Kola were in fact Pukina speakers, who were the rulers of the Tuanaku Kingdom in the 1st and 3rd centuries. This hypothesis suggests that the linguistically diverse area ruled by the Pukina came to adopt Aymara languages in their southern region. In any case, the use of Aymara to refer to the language may have first occurred in the works of the lawyer, magistrate and tax collector in Potosi and Cuzco, Juan Polo de Rondegado. This man, who later assisted Viceroy Toledo in creating a system under which the indigenous population would be ruled for the next 200 years, wrote a report in 1559 entitled On the Lineage of the Incarsh and How They Extended Their Conquests in which he discusses land and taxation issues of the Aymara under the Inca Empire. It took over another century for this usage of Aymara in reference to the language spoken by the Aymara people to become general use. In the meantime the Aymara language was referred to as the language of the collar. The best account of the history of Aymara is that of Sarone Palomino, who shows that the ethnonym Aymara, which came from the glottonym, is likely derived from the Quechwized upon Aymara Y, place of communal property. The entire history of this term is thoroughly outlined in his book, Vices de Andean Linguistica Aymara. The suggestion that Aymara comes from the Aymara words Jaya and Mara is almost certainly a mistaken folk etymology. Orthography Beginning with Spanish missionary efforts, there have been many attempts to create a writing system for Aymara. The colonial sources employed a variety of Hispanized writing systems, the most widespread being that of Bertonio. Many of the early grammars employed unique alphabets as well such as that of Middendorf's Aymara Sprague. The first official alphabet to be adopted for Aymara was the scientific alphabet. It was approved by the Three Congreso Indigenista Interamericano de la Paz in 1954 though its origins can be traced as far back as 1931. Ours. No 1593. It was the first official record of an alphabet but in 1914, Cisco Chucky Wanker Iulo and Julian Polacios Rios had recorded what may be the first of many attempts to have one alphabet for both Quechua and Aymara. Theirs was called Scientifico Quechua Aymara Alphabeto and was composed of 37 graphemes. Several other attempts followed at various degrees of success to do the same. Some orthographic attempts even expand further. The alphabeto-functional trilingue, 
made up of 40 letters and created by the Academia de las Lenguas Aymara y Quechua in Puno in 1944 is the one used by the lexicographer Juan Francisco de Zagalindo in his Dichonario Aymara, Castellano, Castellano, Aymara. This alphabet has five vowels A, E, I, O, U. Aspiration is conveyed with an H next to the consonant and adjectives with. The most unique characteristic is the expression of the uvula, X, with JH. The other uvula segment, the Q, is expressed by Q but transcription rules mandate that the following vowel must be A, E, O presumably to account for uvula lowering and with the intent to facilitate multilingual orthography. The alphabet created by the Commission de Alphabetization y Literatura Aymara was officially recognized in Bolivia in 1968 and, aside from being the alphabet employed by Protestant missionaries, it is also the one used for the translation of the Book of Mormon. It was also in 1968 that de Dios Yapata created his take on the Aymara alphabet at the Instituto de Lengua y Cultura Aymara. Nearly 15 years Years later, the Servicio Nacional de Alphabetización y Education Popular attempted to consolidate these alphabets to create a system which could be used to write both Aymara and Quechua, creating what was known as the Alfabeto Unificado. This alphabet, later sanctioned in Bolivia by Decree 20227 on 9 May 1984 and in Peru as La Resolución Ministerial Peruana 12180D on 18 November 1985 consists of three vowels and 26 consonants and an umlaut to mark vowel length. Phonology. Vowels Aymara has three phonemic vowels, A, I, U, which, in most varieties of the language, distinguish two degrees of length. Long vowels are indicated with an umlaut in writing, A, I, U. The high vowels are lowered to mid-height when near uvular consonants. Vowel deletion Vowel deletion seems to be unique to Aymara. Every instance of vowel deletion occurs for one of three reasons. Phonotactic, syntactic, and morphophonemic. Phonotactic vowel deletion, hiatus reduction, occurs when two vowels become adjacent as a consequence of word construction or through the process of suffixation. In such environments one of the two vowels deletes. If one of the two vowels is U, that vowel will be the only one that surfaces. If the vowels are I and A, uh, the I will surface. If the sequence is composed of two identical vowels, one will delete. Vowel elision can be syntactically conditioned, for example, in nominal compounds and noun phrases. All adjectival nominal modifiers with three or more vowels in a modifier plus nucleus NP lose their final vowel. Morphemic vowel deletion is the most common. Some suffixes always suppress the preceding vowel, and some lose their own nucleus under predictable conditions. The class of vowel suppressing suffixes cannot be defined in terms of some common morphological, morphosyntactic, or semantic feature. Suffixes from all categories in the language suppress the preceding vowel. Consonants as for the consonants, Aymara has phonemic stops at the labial, alveolar, palatal, velar and uvular points of articulation. Stops show no distinction of voice, but each stop has three forms. Plain, glottalized, and aspirated. Aymara also has a trilled R and an alveolar palatal contrast for nasals and laterals, as well as two semi-vowels. Stress stress is usually on the penult, but long vowels may shift it. Also, the final vowel of words is elided except at the end of a phrase, but the stress remains on its original syllable. Syllable structure The vast majority of roots are bisyllabic and, with few exceptions, suffixes are monosyllabic. Roots conform to one of two templates, CVCV -CV or VCV. The former is the most common, with CVCV -CV being predominant. As for the suffixes, the majority are CV, though there are some exceptions. CVCV, CCV, CCVCV and even VCV are possible but rare. The agglutinative nature of this suffix language, 
coupled with morphophonological alternations caused by vowel deletion and phonologically conditioned constraints give rise to interesting surface structures that operate in the domain of the morpheme, syllable, and phonological word, phrase. The phonological, morphophonological processes observed include syllabic reduction, apenthesis, deletion, and reduplication. Morphology. Aymara is a highly agglutinative, suffix sale language. All suffixes can be categorized into the nominal, verbal, transpositional and those not subcategorized for lexical category, as below. Nominal and verbal morphology is characterized by derivational and inflectional-like suffixes as well as non-productive suffixes. Transpositional morphology consists of verbalizes and nominalizes. Suffix is not subcategorized for lexical category can be divided into three stem external word level suffixes and around a dozen phrase final suffixes. Nominal suffixes Non-productive nominal suffixes vary considerably by variant but typically include those below. Some variants additionally also have the suffix verus r, which expresses when, on aka, this. UKA, that, and Kuna, what, temporal suffixes UNT tilde UMT, and Kutcher, which attaches to only two roots, Yani, no, and Jitcha, now. Kinship suffixes, including la, lla, chi, and, or ta the expression of size with cha the suffix sa, side, which attaches to only the demonstratives and corka, where, nominal derivational like suffixes. Diminutive suffixes Delimitative suffix chappy, Nominal inflectional like suffixes Attributive suffix ni possessive paradigm plural naka reciprocal Inclus or patcha case suffixes Syntactic relations are generally case marked With the exception of the unmarked subject Case is affixed to the last element of a noun phrase Usually corresponding to the head most varieties of Aymara have 14 cases. Ablative ta, accusative, allative ru, benefactive taki, comparative jama, genitive da, instrumental, commutative mpi, interactive pura, locative na, limitative karma, nominative, perlative kata, purposive leku. Verbal suffixes All verbs require at least one suffix to be grammatical. Verbal derivational like suffixes Direction of motion Although these suffixes are quite productive, they are not obligatory. The meaning of a word which is affixed with a member of this category is often but not always predictable, and the word formed may have a different meaning than the root. Spatial location, the nine spatial locations ones are likewise highly productive and not obligatory. Similarly, the meaning of the word to which a member of this category attaches is typically predictable. There are also contexts in which the word formed has a meaning that significantly differs from that of the root to which it attaches. Valency increasing. The five valency increasing suffixes may occur on a wide range of verbs but are not obligatory. The meaning expressed when a word receives one of these suffixes is predictable. Multipliers, reverses, the two multipliers, reverses are comparatively less productive and are not obligatory. In some contexts, attachment to a verb conveys a reverse meaning and effectively express the opposite of the meaning of the plain root. In this respect, the multipliers, reverses are the most derivational like of all the suffixes discussed so far. Aspect, this category is complicated in so far as it is made up of a diverse array of suffix types, some of which are more productive and, or obligatory than others. Others, in some varieties of Aymara, there are three suffixes not classified into the categories above, the verbal comparative jamma, the category buffer jwa, and the intensifier pyre. Semantically, these three suffixes do not have much in common. They also vary with respect to the degree which they may be classified as more derivational-like or more inflectional-like. Verbal inflectional-like suffixes Person, tense, person and tense are fused into a unitary suffix. 
These forms are among the most inflectional like of the verbal suffixes insofar as they are all obligatory and productive. The so-called personal knowledge tenses include the simple and the proximal past. The non-personal knowledge tenses includes the future and distal past. Number. The plural verbal suffix, pha is optional. Thus, while pluralization is very productive, it is not obligatory. Mood and modality. Mood and modality includes mood, evidentials, event modality, and the imperative. These suffixes are both productive and obligatory. Their semantic effect is usually transparent. Transpositional suffixes A given word can take several transpositional suffixes. Verbalizers. There are six suffixes whose primary function is to verbalize nominal roots. These forms can be subdivided into two groups, phrase verbalizers and root verbalizers. Nominalizers. There are three suffixes are used to derive nouns. The agent of iri, the resultative ta, and the action nominalizer na. Suffix is not subcategorized for lexical categories. There are two kinds of suffix is not subcategorized for lexical categories. Stem external word final suffixes. There are three suffixes that are not classifiable as members of either nominal or verbal morphology and are not. Phrase final suffixes. The emphatic puni, the delimitative ki, and the additive raki. Phrase final suffixes. Most Aymara phrases have at least one of the eleven possible phrase final suffixes to be grammatical. The phrase final suffix must appear minimally on a noun, noun phrase, verb, or verb phrase. Exceptions to the requirement that a phrase has at least one phrase final suffix are mainly limited to imperative constructions. Geographical distribution. There are roughly 2 million Bolivian speakers, half a million Peruvian speakers, and perhaps a few thousand speakers in Chile and Argentina. At the time of the Spanish conquest in the 16th century, Aymara was the dominant language over a much larger area than today, including most of Highland, Peru south of Cuzco. Over the centuries, Aymara has gradually lost speakers both to Spanish and to Quechua. Many Peruvian and Bolivian communities that were once Aymara speaking now speak Quechua dialects. There is some degree of regional variation within the Aymara language although all the dialects are mutually intelligible. Most studies of the language focused on either the Aymara spoken on the southern Peruvian shore of Lake Titicaca or the Aymara spoken around La Paz. Lucy Thorina Briggs classifies both of these regions as being part of the northern Aymara dialect which encompasses the Department of La Paz in Bolivia and the Department of Puno in Peru. The southern Aymara dialect is spoken in the eastern half of the Aquique province in northern Chile and in most of the Bolivian Department of Oruro. It is also found in northern Potosi and southwest Cochabamba but is slowly being replaced by Quechua in those regions. Intermediate Aymara shares dialectical features with both northern and southern Aymara and is found in the eastern half of the Tacna and Mocga departments in southern Peru and in the northeastern tip of Chile. Wider language family. It is often assumed that the Aymara language descends from the language spoken in Tuanaku on the grounds that it is the native language of that area. Today, this is very far from certain, however, and most specialists now incline to the idea that Aymara did not expand into the Tuanaku area until rather late as it spread southwards from an original homeland more likely to have been in central Peru. Aymara place names are found all the way north into central Peru, and indeed, Aymara is actually but one of the two extant languages of a wider language family, the other surviving representative being Jakaru, Corca. THR family was established by the research of Dr. Lucy Briggs and Dr. Martha Hardman about Easter of the program in linguistics at the University of Florida. Jakaru, Jakiaru equals human language and Corker communities are in the district of Tupé, Yarias Valley, in the department of Lima, in central Peru. Terminology for this wider language family is not yet well established. 
Hardman has proposed the name Jackie, while other widely respected Peruvian linguists have proposed alternative names for the same language family. Alfredo Torero uses the term Aru, Rodolfo Cerrone Palomino, meanwhile, has proposed that the term Aymara should be used for the whole family. Distinguished into two branches, Southern Aymara and Central Aymara. Each of these three proposals has its followers in Andean linguistics. In English usage, some linguists use the term Aymaran for the family and reserve Aymara for the Altiplano branch.